I grew up in a big family, so I immediately noticed these uh, breastfeeding rooms. There was something like, I, I felt so, it's so considerate. This is so Taiwan attitude, I would say. The fact how clean the MRT was, and that every MRT station have a bathroom which is <laughs> clean and free. Yes, yes, free bathrooms. Hi everyone and welcome back to Europeans in Taiwan, the video series where me and Mumu are traveling around the entire European Union here in Taiwan. And this video series is funded by the European Union office here in Taiwan. And today we have found ourselves in my own personal studio. A first time Mumu get to visit this studio and also a first time we have Jola from Hungary here with us today. Who is uh, Jola and uh, what are you doing here in Taiwan? So my name is Jula from Budapest, Hungary. When I saw your name, I would always say like Gula. Yeah. Like, yeah. like Gulash. The G and Y is one letter in Hungarian. It's not two. It's a uh, sound uh, pronounced J. <laughs> Jula. Ju Jula. Jula. So and, how, does, how does, there's not a single Taiwanese who can get your name right then? Actually, it's pretty simple for Taiwanese because uh, it sounds very similar to like Pu Tao Jiu, Jiu La. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're a wine expert and wine promoter and your name literally is Jiu La. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, that's, per that's like, that's destiny right there. I come to Taiwan in 2012 for uh, officially with a... Very sudden uh, scholarship opportunity. Got a phone call from a friend who was in an official visit in Taiwan. Say that there are some scholarship left over. If there are some some uh, people who would be interested and good enough. So I just come in and I re remember very sharply that when I get out the airport in Taoyuan, I was like, all right, let's see what we jump into. <laughs> and since 2015, I'm working as a wine importer. When you first came here then, was your plan to become like a wine expert 12 years later here in Taiwan? Before I came here, I had a small wine store in, in Budapest. So that was one of my my ideas that I can probably see the, the wine market and then see if I can somehow contribute to, to promote Hungary in that way. So yeah, since the beginning, it was it was kind of a plan. How much did you know about Taiwan before coming here then? Like, what was your expectations of Taiwan? Actually, I, I have to say, compared to my, my peers and even some of my Taiwanese friends, I know surprisingly a lot, especially about the political history of Taiwan. Okay. In Hungary, I studied international relations. Therefore, we learn quite quite deeply about Taiwan political landscape and the geopolitical interests around this region. And I was also quite aware of the, the booming bicycle and semiconductor industries. When I learned about Taiwan in university, I, I never thought I will ever come here. So one of my first plans was to, to visit the giant and marry the factories in Taiwan. So I have to ask then, if you would compare the Taiwan that you read about, what has been like the biggest difference or like the, the most surprising element for you? It was very interesting to see how quickly Taiwan modernized, how quickly it became in some way ahead of Europe, while the architectural uh, landscape of Taiwan is quite behind Europe. The first time I come to Taipei and I tried the MRT and uh, the fact how clean the MRT was and that every MRT station have a bathroom which is <laughs> clean and free. Yes, yes, free bathrooms. Last summer I visited London and my friend was complaining to me that how come I always praising Taiwan MRT <laughs> so much when we are traveling in the London man, uh, London Underground? Because it was so big contrast. <laughs> Do you have like MRT in, in Hungary or like... We, we have Underground, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to pay for the, the toilets. Three. That's just one thing that you have to pay, usually like one euro or something. The problem is that you don't really feel like you want to pay for that. The tidiness and, um, and the environment is just, just way, way less than than in Taiwan. I grew up in a big family, so I immediately noticed these uh, breastfeeding rooms. There was something like, I, I felt so, it's so considerate. This is so Taiwan attitude, I would say, that uh, the bathrooms are li like this. And um, once I, I forget my umbrella in the underground, I was pretty upset about it. And I go to the information desk, I told them, I'm sorry, I left my umbrella in the train. Is it is it possible that, that if you find it, you let me know, etc., etc.? He was just, oh, of of course, no problem. How was the umbrella look like? Blah, blah, blah. And then 
they say that, okay, tomorrow morning you get on the MRT here. They said, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, then just come here. It will be here. So it's like... Really? It's was like it? So was amazing. it there? Yeah, it was there. It was there. And and the fact that they asked me, where will I get on the <laughs> MRT so they will be there? It was so surprising and so so nice. Wow. Okay, that is <laughs> unbelievable. So I, I got my umbrella back. I lost it another time. <laughs> Taiwan and umbrella, that's, <laughs> that's, that's un unavoidable. <laughs> Maybe this is also covers my next question, because I was going to ask, after living here in Taiwan for 12 years, how do you describe living in Taiwan to like your family or friends back home in Europe in only one sentence? Comfortable. It's one word. There we go. <laughs> European efficiency right there. <laughs> I have to admit, although I am European, my knowledge about uh, Hungary is, is very limited. Only thing I know is that they would often treat me on goulash. <laughs> that's like the, the only thing I know with, with, because, pa with paprika. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and that's, uh, Hungarian recipes, almost all of the Hungarian recipes starts with take a big head of onion and some paprika. So <laughs> when you're meeting Taiwanese people on the street, do they know what, what Hungary is? Or would you say like, I'm from Hungary and they were like, oh, the <laughs> Like how, how does that work? Most of the time, the, I would say the average people doesn't really know. If I say Budapest, mm. then, then they may have some ideas. The most surprising answer for this was some music enthusiasts. They were like, oh, Liszt. Uh, Liszt. Franz Liszt was a very famous composer. Okay. Uh, and there are a Liszt institution in, in Kaohsiung. Musicians or famous sportsmen. In, in Hungary, sport education and uh, career in sport is kind of encouraged in certain sports by the, the government. So swimming, uh, kayak, canoeing, football and uh, basketball, they are all quite heavily subsidized. So since, since uh, elementary school, kids have the chance to, to excel and, and see a career path out of that. I was swimming in one of the, the best uh, swimming school. So it was when, when we were in the outside lane, age of five or six, two Olympic champion at the time was swimming in the other lane next to us. So Oh, really? Who, so who, who won? You are the champion? No, no, no. <laughs> we didn't compete with them okay. at the time. What, what is something that you wish that Taiwanese people should know about, about Hungary then? The hot springs. Taiwanese have, people uh, love hot springs. Hot springs, and hot springs too. Budapest have like... 20 something hot spring just within Budapest and then one of the favorite place of my Taiwanese friends to visit is called Eger. That's about uh, one and a half hour drive from Budapest. It's a medieval town. They have a exquisite wine region where they make Taiwanese people's favorite Hungarian wines, the Booth Blood. And one of the best place I always recommend if they visit Budapest is the New York Coffee House, which New is... New York Coffee House? New York Coffee House. That's the name of the coffee house. Okay, can you just go to New York then? No, no, no. no. <laughs> you cannot. Actually, in multiple times it was elected the, the most beautiful coffee house in the world. Most of the Hungarian poets, writers, journalists, they were living there basically in the daytime. That was their office. The head waiter of the coffee house, when, when he died, he left over some of the poems we didn't even know existed because this is how the poets paid for their breakfast. To, oh, really? To give him the, the, the poems. It definitely sounds like something both Taiwanese and Swedes should go and go and check out. It's worse to book a table because otherwise you might end up waiting uh, couple hours Taiwanese sometimes. people don't don't care they, yeah, yeah, they can, they they can wait hours they can wait days for a for a good Instagrammable restaurant <laughs> I also know that you actually do not really need to go to Hungary to actually see Hungary because it's like super popular for like Hollywood movies most of the time when you see Budapest in a movie it's not representing Budapest like uh, okay in Die Hard 5 it's like uh, Moscow. Oh, so they, sh they shoot in Budapest. <laughs> yes, but they, and you they can recognize the buildings in Budapest. But they say it's <laughs> but Moscow. But they say it's Moscow. Sometimes even I'm surprised that, uh, oh, this movie was made in, in the Korda studio. What, what is a word or sentence in Hungarian they should know before visiting? To say hi, it's pretty simple. It's just see ya. See ya. That's, yes, that's very, like, very simple. Bye bye. See ya. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> but you say that that means hello. Uh, hello or bye, both. It's, oh, it's in, interchangeable. Okay, okay. You shouldn't be surprised if in Hungary they want to give a kiss to your cheek. That's that's kind of normal. Like a French. Uh, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. You didn't kiss me when you came here, though. 
Yeah, but I live in Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> and now, as after we've been been talking here, I think I know one more thing that is actually from Hungary. That is the Rubik's cube. That's true, yes, right? Yes, exactly. I have to ask you then: Do you know how to solve a Rubik's cube? I used to know. I haven't played with it for quite a while. I remember my best time was、uh, one minute twenty four seconds. I beat you. My best, my best record is like fifty six seconds. But but that was.、Uh, can you do it now? No, <laughs> <laughs> that was fifteen years ago when I was bored a summer and I just like. And you know the inventor of this is still alive. Really? Yeah. No, yeah. I thought this was like done in like the forties or something, fifties. Okay, that's pretty cool. Seventy-eight years old. Quite a few things which was invented by Hungarian. One of the most interesting thing I think is a、uh, pen. It's B,、mm-hmm. and the reason it's called B, it's a brand called Bic. B I C. Okay. And the reason that was the name of the brand is because the ballpoint pen was invented by a Hungarian, Lajos Biro. Okay. And the Biro became the big, and the B is the so the name of the the pen, what we call pen today,、uh, it got the name from the inventor of the ballpoint pen, Mr. Which Biro. Which is which is Hungarian. He was Hungarian. Yes. Oh wow. How would you even become a wine expert in Hungary? I would just assume that you're all like goulash chefs or like inventors. <laughs> it seems Hungary is a very old country. It was established over a thousand years ago. Since the beginning, the area where Hungary is, even、uh, under the Roman times, the wine was so good that、uh, some Roman Caesar actually forbid wine production there because it meant too much competition for the for the Roman winemakers. Hungary has over ha- has twenty two wine districts,、uh, quite distinctive. Flavors from everywhere. Tokai, Kue Fujio, or the Asu Noble Rot Wine is a is a world famous、uh, delicacy. One barrel of Tokai Asu was about similar than a whole s-、uh, small village income, yearly income. I have to ask then. I don't want to start like any in international、uh, situations here. But a few weeks back, we had a Spanish representative here in Taiwan, and he was promoting the the Spanish wines quite、uh, freely. And yeah, Spain producing way more wines than Hungary does, and they have excellent wine regions as well. So that's that's not a debate. I, but I have to ask then, which one produces the best wine? I don't think there is a thing as a best wine. Okay. Because and you're supposed you wanna, to be the wine expert now. <laughs> what's the best wine? The most expensive wine. The the best wine that you would enjoy with a certain meal. If you're eating a nice tapas in a Spanish restaurant, I d- I would definitely choose a Spanish wine for it. If、uh, you have a Hungarian goulash. If I have a Hungarian goulash, I would definitely go for a Hungarian、uh, Buzzblad. I don't drink wine myself, so I'm like the worst person to have this conversation. <laughs> But my impression of Just general Taiwanese alcohol culture is like Taiwan beer and Gaoliang.、Mm-hmm. I don't see like wine coming into the Taiwanese lifestyle. It's interesting that you say that because the taxation system in Taiwan is quite expensive to consume. Way more expensive than beer or whiskey. Whiskey is tax free. Wine is heavily taxed. So.、Huh. So if I should if, start drinking, I should start drinking whiskey. That's what, yeah, that's what, that's you, what I'm hearing right if now. If you visit Taiwan, definitely grab some whiskey to bring back because Taiwan has one of the world's biggest selection of whiskeys and one of the best prices of whiskeys. I mean, it's not in my head, but yes, I've, <laughs> I, even I have purchased whiskey to to bring abroad to my friends. Yes, Taiwan has actually the highest number of WSET students, the Wine and Spirit Education Trust. I mean, thousands of Taiwanese people learn more. About the wine culture, Taiwan has a very steadily growing, quite well-educated consumer. <laughs> I do see that we also have、uh, two bottles here. Are are these the the thirty thousand NT one? No, no, no. no, no. Okay, <laughs> I just know like how careful do I need to be here? <laughs> so me as a non-wine expert can clearly see that this is darker. Yes, that's a red wine. This is. Is is this white wine? No, this looks like yellow wine. This is wine. A sweet wine. I like. I'm a coffee drinker,、mm-hmm. so to me, I see this and I'm like, okay, it's light roast and dark roast. <laughs> That's、uh, well, in a way. So this is a 2008 late harvest wine from Tokai, and this is、uh, the famous Booze Blood or Gong Niu Xie. I would say in Taiwan, this is the most popular. Uh, kind of wine.、Uh, so you can buy these in Taiwan. Yes, you can buy these in Taiwan, and both of them are under two thousand 
what is like step one? How do I choose my first bottle? I would say come to one of the wine exhibitions. Be happy to to introduce uh, the wines. And of course, if you want to try some Hungarian wine, you of course have all the links down in the description. In between all these different wines, you should of course also drink some water. That's correct, right? Yes. Yes, I'm checking definitely. with the wine expert here. Double quantity water than the wine you drink if you don't want to get wasted. Oh, okay, that's how it works. So as part of this week's Mumu giveaway, you have the chance to win these Team Europe water bottles to make sure that you are hydrated in between all these wine bottles as well. All you have to do is to check the European Union office in Taiwan's Facebook. You have them on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as well. Just follow their instructions when this video is shared on their social media, and you will have a chance of winning your own Team Europe water bottle. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. Starts with L as in like. Ends with S, S and subscribe. Please to both and see you all in the next one. As Hungarians say, no made like it, ha tetszett, és iratkozz fel. I have no idea what that means. Like and subscribe. Oh, like and subscribe. <laughs> okay, I, I should know that.